In history, there are many ways that you can convince someone to fight. You can offer them money, power, glory. You could instill in them a sense of duty or patriotism. Or for that matter, you could simply insult them as the British did in World War I. Okay, now let's be real here. World War I absolutely sucked. There was a reason that they referred to it as the Great War, and I can absolutely tell you that that was not because it was good, in really any way, shape, or form, with the exception of being very good at killing men. Over 30 different nations would declare war on each other between the period of 1914 and 1918. The majority of these would join on the side of the Allies, including Serbia, Russia, France, Britain, and Italy and the United States. And on the opposite end, they were opposed by Germany, Austria, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. These powers, as you can see from this map, would form something called the Central Powers, because they were in the center. That's, that's kind of how that works. And over the course of the four years, over 70 million men would contribute to the war effort in some way, whether that was being drafted into the war itself, or participating in some other kind of aspect. And then over the course of the war, the total combined civilian and military casualties of this conflict would exceed 40 million people. Which, just so you realize, is over half of the people that actually fought. And honestly, there is a reason why there were so many casualties. The old mantra of new weapons, old tactics really does ring true. Millions of men would line up in trenches and charge across no man's land into barbed wire, booby traps, and machine guns. I mean, very quickly after the war started, people began to realize like, okay, this is not something that is gonna go over quickly, and this is gonna be horrible. This is not a good war. It is a great war, mind you, but great in the most terrible sense of the word. And then, of course, because of this, a lot of that patriotic fervor that people had initially going into the conflict very quickly disappeared, which left recruiters scrambling to figure out, well, how are we going to get more men in order to throw them into the meat grinder? And so into our story comes this guy, Vice Admiral Charles Penrose Fitzgerald. On the 30th of August, 1914, in the city of Folkestone, he would organize a group of women to go around handing white feathers to any men that they saw that were not in uniform. Fitzgerald firmly believed that shaming these men would be the key in order to bring them to the battlefield. And by enlisting women in order to do so, this would double the edge. Because anyone could be criticized by their father. But being accosted by a pretty young woman on the street? Now that was something that would hurt every man's pride. But really the question in here is, why white feathers? Why would people associate that with cowardice in the first place? Well, the initial symbol of white feathers really derives from something that is called cockfighting, which, no, don't get that dirty image in your head. The idea of this has to do with roosters, not what you're thinking of, you dirty little individuals. So when a rooster would have a white tail feather, this was a sign in its breeding to at least some people by superstition that this rooster was something that was going to lack aggression. It wasn't going to be nearly as powerful. And so this idea was fairly common already in the cultural sphere of Britain, but this was cemented in 1902 with the introduction of this book, The Four White Feathers. So over the course of the book, the protagonist receives four white feathers as a symbol of cowardice. And this happens when he resigns from his job in Sudan where he refuses to fight in the war. The feathers are given to him by other members within the army, his peers, including the woman that he's actually engaged to, who then subsequently breaks off their engagement because, well, she's not going to be with a coward. And thus, the only way to earn back his honor, to earn back his friends, in order to earn back his loved one, he has to go off and fight. So Fitzgerald starts this movement in 1914, and it spreads rapidly all around the country, quickly gaining the attention of the press due to some of the more negative responses, we should say. Women in various... Various. 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 Various locations. Women in various locations would take it upon themselves to hand out white feathers in order to shame men who were not fulfilling their civic duties and obligations. And in response to this, the government was actually forced to issue badges to men that were fulfilling their duty to the war in some other capacity, such as, say, factory workers or vital telecommunications workers or varying things along that line. After all, if you send off all the men who are building the bombs to war, or the bullets for that matter, they're not going to have any bullets to actually fire in the first place because there's no workers making it. But despite this, many men were still harassed on the street and coerced who were most certainly not the right targets. As many of these women were very gung-ho and would even go after men who were currently on leave from the front. They were already in the military and they would become back and harassed by women for why they weren't on the front. One such story comes from a certain man by the name of Private Ernest Atkins, who had returned on leave from the Western Front and was handed a feather while he was on the tram. 
Disgusted by this public insult as to his cowardice, he turned around to the woman and slapped her right across the face before declaring that the boys in Passchendaele would love to have such a feather. Other examples included groups of young men that these women would go up to, men who were actually not men. They were, in fact, boys. They were 16 years or younger, and they would be harassed by groups of women on the street telling them to go off to war, not realizing what their age were. So these would effectively hang out around schoolyards, harassing young men who were trying to get home from school. And I'll be honest, one of the darker things that the Order did was go after men who had already been injured in war itself, such as the case of the veteran Robert W. Farrow, who had been sent back to England after he had had his hand blown off in the middle of battle in the front. He was riding in a tram car where he had both of his hands, or rather his arms, in the coat of his jacket. A woman came up to him very harshly, pinned a white feather to him, and started to mock him for not being at the front, criticizing him. His only response was to take out his hand, mutilate it, and shove it right in her face, showing the stump. The reports from this day state that the woman was so incredibly embarrassed with shame that she ran out of the tram car into the streets. But perhaps the worst case, in my opinion, is that of Seaman George Sampson, who had received a feather when he was on his way to a reception in his honor to receive the Victoria Cross as a reward for his actions at Gallipoli. For those that are not aware, the Victoria Cross is the highest decoration that you are able to get in the British military for acts of valor, going above and beyond duty. So this man was quite literally the best of the best, and still he was accosted. Eventually, over time, the movement would face increasing backlash from the public, who had, quite frankly, had enough of their shaming tactics. And after the end of the First World War, the White Feather campaign would naturally just die a natural death. After all, really, it was only a propaganda tool in order to sign more men up in the first place. Now, the White Feather movement did prove to be successful in its aim of encouraging men to sign up and fight on the front, but the collateral damage in this case was young men's lives, and many were lost who should not have been lost because of this movement. And with that, I think we're going to end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to put a like, comment below, subscribe. Let me know what it is else that you would want to see. What I'm going to be focusing on more here in the future is I plan on doing a lot more alternate history as well as different videos for Hearts of Iron as well as Europe Universalis. If there's anything in particular that you would like to see from me, please do let me know. I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into a lot of these videos, so I really want your input. Thank you very much, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.